Hi, I'm Casey Higgins, Atlanta-based guitarist and author. I have a couple books on Amazon and a number of albums out on Spotify. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe and think about becoming a Patreon member. I have a lot of new videos coming out as I'm figuring out how to do audio and lighting and such. But I have a number of videos coming out based on my books and improvisation. So if you like what you see and like to see more, uh, help me out. And comments and shares and likes really, really help me. So thanks a lot. So to start off, we have a TC Electronics Polytune, which is invaluable for me for tuning quickly. And I also use it as a buffer so I can run long cables to my guitar. After that, we have a Wampler Ego Compressor. And this is a really cool, very tweakable pedal that I use for either a infinite sustain to get the note, note to just ring out as long as I want or just to just bring up basically the quiet notes so all, all my volume is a little more even. After that, it goes into a Zvex loop gate, which is really, really cool pedal. I use it as a, mainly as a bypass loop for, all, for most of my distortion pedals, and so I can combine a couple of them and turn them all on and off at the same time. But it also has a buffer in it, which uh, I don't really need, um, and it has a gate which is really, really helpful. And I mainly use it in quieter situations, uh, quieter gigs, and especially rehearsals. I find it invaluable for just making rehearsals go smoother. And so it's just a lot less annoying. But the other thing it does is it has a chop function, which makes it into a kind of a tremolo pedal, which is really cool. But in the loop, I have a Pigtronics Distortion. I like this pedal because I can get away with fuzz sounds without having it before the buffer. And it has a button on the top that goes from a kind of an overdrive um, to a overdrive with fuzz. And it has a lot of different settings like a big muff setting, a tube screamer setting, kind of a uh, mid scoop tube screamer setting. So super versatile pedal. And it has a chip in it so it doesn't distort every frequency. So especially at lo quieter volumes, you know, you don't get, it's not as fuzzy. And uh, I don't find myself having to turn the distortion up when I'm playing at home like I do with most distortion pedals. Uh, but very cool pedal. After that, it goes into a Boss Blues Driver. And this is mainly a combiner pedal. So I use it with my other pedals to, as a gain, extra gain stage. But I also like to use it as my clean sound, so I'll just leave it on and just for a little extra grit and maybe a little extra treble. After that, it goes into a Caleb's clone, Kingdom of Tone, which is a King of Tone clone. It's very well built and sounds great. And the cool thing about this pedal is it really showed me how much treble affects your volume. I've always just shied away from treble because it just really, really quickly gets harsh for, to me. I'll often use presence more than treble just to get rid of that ice pickiness. But a big part of my tone too is I try to get it to sound ice picky when I have the tone all the way up. And then I can roll it down to about five to seven just to get, just to get that harshness out. And you know, if I want to blend into the band more, I'll just turn my tone down. And then uh, it just makes it a little uh, harder to hear me, which is really helpful when you're playing rhythm and you don't want to stick out. So after the Kingdom of Tones, it lastly goes into a J-Rocket Archer Icon. And I just wanted to see what was up with the, 
clones and the clones. But this one to my ear sounded most like an actual clone. Mainly like it for using with my strats and single coil pickups. You know, but it's, it's also really, really nice for combining pedals. Like the King of Tone, it has really, really nice treble that doesn't get harsh or annoying. And big fan. I really want to get the white one or the silver one and probably the white one as well. But so those are all in the loop gate, so I can combine them depending on the room or what I'm feeling. You know, it's really just to have fun. You know, I have so many distortions. I could get away with three, but a big part of that this too, and the reason I have so many is when I'm again in quieter situations, I can hit like three distortion pedals and usually get it to feedback or you know, I, I, I call these distortion and overdrive. I just kind of use those terms interchangeably because I use them, use the pedals that both of those ways. You know, I like to use the Archer as a crunch pedal and, and a you know, gain stage and same with the Blues Driver. Now after that I have outside of the loop is a double box of rock by Zvex. I'm a huge Zvex fan and huge fan of this dual super hard on. Mainly use this pedal. I have the right side set up as a boost and I have that always on. So at the beginning of a show, I'll turn it off. Usually the first song because we're always quieter during the first song. And then it kind of, once everybody gets situated and normalized, you know, I, I usually don't have sound checks. <laughs> I try not to rely on sound checks. And so, especially with the volume pedal, you know, you can get situated. But uh, I also use it for like when I'm playing rhythm guitar and I don't want to stand out, I can hit that and kind of blend back into the band. And so I have, uh, you know, a, a volume down button, which to me is just super useful. But since it's a boost and it adds a little more volume, it usually sounds like it adds a little more treble as well. So it, it helps with that as well, you know, when you lower it, it sounds like you're losing a little bit of treble. And you probably are just a little bit, but so that just really helps blend in. And the other side, I either have it set up as a boost or you know, really into this box of rock too. It sounds really cool and sounds good with all, all the amp, all my amps. Now, it doesn't sound fuzzy or anything, but this is the double rock pedal. is super freaking cool. I, I love it. Now after that, I have my weirdest pedal, and this is a Korg Pandora Stomp. And through this, I mainly use it as a reverb. Reverb sounds really good on it, but the reason I bought it was it has a glissando effect. It's called Lucky. The program is called Lucky. And when you hit one note, it sounds, it's a, it's a synthesizer. <laughs> so when you hit one note, it it's, has a synth sound, and when you hit another note, it bends that note into the next one. So you have to watch out with your... You have to watch out with your tracking. If you, if you hit a muted note, it kind of freaks out. So it's... Tricky little pedal with the tracking, but I just love the way it sounds and I never heard another pedal that does glissando. So I also use this for a auto wah. So I was just looking for an auto wah that I could play fast with, kind of like Guthrie Govan. It sounds really cool. And it also has a, a rotary simulator, which is really cool because it slows down and speeds up like you're hitting the button a bunch of times, which is, sounds really neat. It just kind of does, kind of just does that on its own. I guess the more you play, the faster it gets. And after that, I have a Source Audio Nemesis Delay. I was really impressed with this pedal. 
I was looking for a really, really, really clear pedal. And to me, the sign of a really good delay pedal is being able to turn the mix down. And for this pedal, I really have the mix o over nine, nine o'clock. It's just really, really clear pedal. It also has an output buffer on it. And if you go into the app, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with dual delays. And, but I like to have some weird sounds, weird delay sounds. So this one I'll use actually when I'm shredding to get kind of a keyboard pad sound. I mainly like a, just a digital delay, either f four tap or one tap. I use the tape delay a lot um, so I can turn up the feedback. And, and turn the knobs. The cool thing about this pedal is you can hold the button and it'll, it stops all the repeats. And so when you just turn it off, you can have the trails. There's a lot of sweep delays. And I've been really into the Benson, I think it's called Ecorec. That one's really cool. And it's also on the Source Audio app. And I have some more weird sounds. Then uh, the U2 sound. Now the Andy Timmons setting is amazing. I learned a lot about delay just from downloading that preset. And lastly, there's a golden preset on the app, which is based on the golden ratio, I believe. trails and I'm also running a Morningstar MC6 with the Nemesis delay and I have a T-Rex power supply I've been experimenting with splitting off power and you know, it took a lot of work with this pedal board just having the loop gate you know there's, there's a lot of noise that came with that and just having the pedals this close there's a lot of noise from that so I'm um, experimenting with power supplies now. So that's the blues driver and the king of tone on the blue side. But that's my gold board. So this is my mini board and my mini board is just a stripped down version of every pedal that I basically need at a show. So kind of distortion, compression, tuning, and boost. And then kind of I have switch out a reverb or sometimes put the Pandora on there. So the signal flow for this one starts with another Polytune uh, 3 tuner. I have the buffer on, but I don't really need it. For me in my experiments, I don't really need a buffer unless I'm 
running right around five pedals. It's kind of more than five pedals. I start thinking about input and output buffers. But for this one, I'm just using a buffer on the input. And after that, I have a SP compressor. It's a really cool compressor. It's super easy to use. And I, like my other compressor, I use it as either a, it's kind of on so that you can't tell it's on, so it's not squishy, or just kind of an infinite sustain. So which with the blend knob is really cool. I just turn that uh, and get both of those sounds really easily. Uh, next is the Andy Timmons drive. I'm a big Andy Timmons fan. Cool thing about this is it has a boost, but the boost is actually dirty. <laughs> So, I mean, I would call that an overdrive. And then when you uh, combine it with the other side. So that's the distorted side. The thing I like about this pedal is it's a really Swiss Army knife pedal. And it has a... EQ and an air knob is kind of more like a presence or upper treble and the EQ is just normal EQ so I'm never in a situation where I need more treble. After that there's a simple switch double boost pedal. This one's pretty cool it has an overdrive, a boost, and a distortion which are LED um, based overdrives and distortions but I use this as a double boost so the right side is always on and it's just a little bit louder and I can turn it off and kind of on the verses and, and, and blend into the band if I need to. And the other side is just a boost, but sometimes I use the distortions or the overdrives and, um, just for fun. And lastly, it goes into the Ocean's Eleven reverb. Um, my favorite is the Auto Infinite, but I also use the Shimmer and the Plate and the Rube reverb a lot. But really, really cool sounding reverb, and it has an external switch, you know, for infinite repeats. So I, I, I like to use that a lot with reverb. And powering the whole thing is a Voodoo Labs ISO 5. And I mainly use this one so I can run the SP compressor at 18 volts. And uh, it's it's a little little not noisier, but you have a lot more headroom. To me, it sounds like what I think of as a compressor, but you notice too that there's a notch cut out of this, so I'll often use this pedal board with my Axe FX. And I have a riser for my FC12, so I can just slide the pedal board right under that and it doesn't take uh, much more room. And I really like using the distortion pedals with the Axe FX. But everything else on the Axe FX is awesome. You know. As I've used the Axe FX, the distortion sounds just keep getting better and better but I love my pedals yeah. so that's my mini board and I mainly use that for places where I don't have room or I just don't want to bring a big pedal board all these pedal boards were specifically built to for this one metal case and so I kind of started with that and then what tried to figure out how many pedals I could fit on it and, and figure out what my needs were. These two pedal boards I'm using square plugs uh, just so I have soldered connections. Your pedals move at all if you have the fuzzy if you have the fuzzy velcro it will just destroy your cables so kind of the huge thing for me is velcro. If I can't turn the pedal board upside down and have the pedals stay on you know it's just it's kind of not worth it because I'm just going to be damaging my pedals and damaging my cables and it's just non-stop headaches pretty much. But with the soldered cables, you know, they're just uh, going to be bulletproof for a lot longer and no potential problems for a lot longer. And I also made my own uh, power cables just so I can have the, the cable lengths shorter. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe and think about becoming a Patreon member.